Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are in this amazing world. My name is Donovan Jolly, and I'm here with Dallin Anderson of High Altitude Investing. You guys are tuning in to episode number 20 of the Moon Boy podcast. This is a podcast that we host every single weekend. We upload the video every single Sunday, so you guys can look forward to amazing updates and information where we just get to talk around our own perspective and thoughts with crypto aside from the charts. You guys will also be able to subscribe to both of our channels. Links will be in the description of this video where you're also going to be able to find five videos a week on both of our channels where we do more technical approach with charts and just talk about the markets as a whole. You guys are also going to be able to find this on all platforms, Spotify, Google, iTunes, all of them. You guys are going to be able to find uh, the, uh, links in the description of the video. If you guys would actually rather just um, listen and download this, maybe you're working out, maybe you're on the road or something, you know, this is going to be a way for you guys to actually get the same podcast aside from YouTube. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We absolutely love to have all of the supporting faces supporting this channel every single week. You know, this has been something I've had a lot of fun doing personally, just to be able to talk about crypto, be able to kind of dive in from a different sort of approach that doesn't get talked about. I know I'm really just looking forward to all of what we're seeing in crypto right now. You know, I think one of the biggest things for me looking forward to is just the simple fact that a lot of our subscribers, a lot of these VIPs are finally starting to get a taste of kind of what it's like when altcoins start to rally. And the, the really, I the think, like yeah, exactly. And pff, it hasn't even started really. This is just the very, very beginning of all of this. And I'm excited to be able to have these new guys that are going to be able to experience what a genuine bull run actually feels like. Yeah, no kidding, huh? Because literally we've moved up like 300% on some of the alts from the lows up. Mm -hmm. And 300% compares to the all-time high. And then compares to a break of the all-time high and price discovery. 300% mm -hmm. is literally like... Chump change <laughs> compared to how much we're going to be making in the markets. Like, over the past few months during all the COVID panic and stuff, we've actually been able to make a lot of money in our businesses and in the cryptocurrency markets mm -hmm. and it's just cool to be able to kind of profit in a time where there's so much confusion and chaos it almost mm -hmm. like sets you apart from other entrepreneurs from other businessmen if you can be the person that actually knows how to make money in times of fear maintain your own clarity mm -hmm. and it's been really cool to do that but as we move into the full bull market inside of these markets and really break the previous all-time highs, it's going to be so easy to make money that we're going to be hearing all of the stories of people that are buying, you know, a mansion when they literally were broke before. Yeah, yeah. And to have those stories coming up is probably going to be the most exciting thing moving forward as far as, like, this channel and my channel is hearing about other people's testimonials in the comments and in mm -hmm. the discord group. Yeah, I agree. And you know, f for me, I was in, well, for both of us, really, we were able to experience kind of what it's like, all of the highs and the lows of the market cycle. And to be completely honest, the, the last bull run was way easier than this one. I mean, from the very point we started up trending, it was just short little pullbacks, but the whole time it was going up. Whereas this one's been a lot more volatile. I think because of that, it's shaken way more people out of the market. Um, many people are kind of, I've noticed a lot of people that are starting to get really discouraged on a number of different cryptos, specifically the XRP community. I've seen a lot of them talking about how they're starting to sell their XRP and they're moving it into Chainlink or they're moving it into something else that's already been pumping. And, you know, we're starting to see that uneasiness where people are, it, in my opinion, it's just the disbelief phase where, you know, people see a lot of it, they see their favorite traders making a bunch of profits. They see the calls that we've been making. But then themselves, they're still holding to these coins that haven't pumped. So then they start to feel a little bit anxious, a little bit of worry coming into their uh, trading plan because of the fact they see everybody making money, they're not making money right this second. So then what usually happens is they can't handle that um, that feeling and so they end up just switching into something else. And you know, it, right now is really easy to get chopped up with the market, uh, with all the uncertainty as a whole. To me, it looks really good. I just think it's just a classic example of the disbelief phase in the market cycle. Um, but nonetheless, really right now, I think that in the next three months, we'll start to see breakouts. We'll start to see those coins that have maybe been lacking start to really show what they, you know, their power inside of the market. And so with right now, with this being kind of in this midway point, I see a lot of people starting to make emotional decisions, selling positions, trying to jump into something else. And you know, 
we saw a lot of that back in 2017. I've personally made a lot of mistakes doing that type of stuff. So just to quickly say some a little bit of advice and some tips is just to make sure that you guys are sticking to your plans right now. I know that you know the market has been going up. There's always the possibility for a rejection of resistance, but nonetheless, I think overall everybody needs to keep that long-term prospect in mind because as long as they focus on that long-term um, vision, you know, all of this stuff that might be happening, all of the coins pumping, all of these people making money, they're not going to feel so left out. They're not going to feel all of these uncertainties, and it's just going to allow them to continue to make those profits consistently. So, are you referring to people that are selling their XRP right now? Really to go into To go into other altcoins because of the fact that XRP is lagging behind? Mm -hmm. it, it partially. I mean, I've seen, I've been seeing people just do it in general. They might be holding on to, maybe it's not XRP, maybe it's something else. They'll hold on to it for a long time. They see other coins starting to pump. Even if their altcoin may have started to go up, they just get too emotional and then they want to just switch their positions and flip-flop. That's going to hurt not only your profits because you're generally going to be FOMOing in at the top of a trend. Um, on top of that, you also have the issue where, you know, tax situations, that's not going to help. And so really just to touch up on that, it's not just XRP, but it's just kind of the overall sentiment that I'm seeing in the disbelief phase where there is a lot of uncertainty. The markets could really go either or direction. And so people are more likely to make those types of mistakes. I have noticed though, XRP is probably <clears throat> the most um, hated right now. And the most people are panic selling it, which kind of makes sense because a lot of the other coins have already pumped and made a disbelief phase and then a retracement to move into the bull market. Whereas XRP in and of itself has not made yeah, well, even it hasn't even made a higher high yet. Mm -hmm. And so it's in depression where all the other ones are in disbelief. Mm -hmm. And so it seems to be the one that people are hating the most. But also with that being said, it's probably the one that is going to pop really hard really soon mm -hmm. because of the fact that all the other ones have done it. Mm -hmm. So we already know kind of the roadmap for XRP. Mm -hmm. And so it's one that I personally am looking to buy more of. I haven't bought more of them for probably a week or so now but I probably will be buying more soon just because I've noticed that kind of sentiment with it. Mm -hmm. And and I'll probably be making some more XRP videos as well because uh -oh. <laughs> those ones do really good. <laughs> yeah, it's nice do. to get a bunch of views. Yeah, I, I like XRP. Once I found out how supportive the and well for me like I like XRP and I've liked it for a while, but then when I started making videos about XRP, I started to see how big the community was, and then I really started liking XRP because it was really the XRP community that got me to where I'm at in my YouTube channel. It was my XRP analysis that really got me subscribers and got me to the point now. And so, you know, I've been watching it for a while. I've been really big into following a lot of different XRP influencers. And just recently, the thing that I've noticed, and really the reason why we're even talking about this, is just how many people I've seen starting to get discouraged by XRP, how the sh sentiment has shifted. What used to be every single every single low or low, it didn't matter. Everybody would still say they were bullish. They'd still have their upside targets. This most recent sell-off was the one that switched everything up. I'm not seeing the same bullish stance from the same influencers. Those influencers that were big XRP influencers have switched to starting to talk about other cryptocurrencies. And, you know, with what we were just talking about, how we're starting to see people moving, selling their XRP to move into something else that's been performing. You know, it's very similar to what we saw with, like, Digibyte, where, you know, Digibyte got delisted from Poloniex. There was all of this uncertainty with uh, Binance that, you know, they were bickering back and forth with CEOs and stuff. And then, you know, Digibuy sold, made one more lower low, and then what's been the coin that's pretty much been outperforming the last couple months. I kind of expect XRP and these cryptos that have made lower lows the entire way down, whereas maybe Ethereum or Chainlink have kind of uptrended. I foresee XRP with it lagging like it has when it does pump. It's going to be one of the biggest, one of the quickest, and it's going to cause all those people that, you know, panic sold their XRP, they're going to go FOMO by after it's already started to break out. But I'm kind of expecting, you know, a big sudden breakout, a quick one, not anything that's going to take a time to build up, because I think with how low it's just been going, you know, it's, it's very oversold right now. Yeah, it just reminds me of 2018 Bitcoin, and everybody in 2018, when Bitcoin hit 3200 
once Bitcoin started rallying, everybody was like, oh, this is the top, this is the top, this is the top, this is the top. And it just went from 3.2 thousand to 14K like it was no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like it literally just pumped straight through resistance. It literally didn't even hold back at resistance. It just went right through resistance. Mm -hmm. And went straight up to 14,000 per coin. And the move is so parabolic from that low to that peak. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I think XRP will look too. Mm -hmm. Where we just get this parabolic move. But XRP will even be more parabolic. Because XRP literally just makes like directly vertical candles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, one of my favorite things to do on XRP videos is to go back and just look at the pre-consolidation of 2017. You know, just kind of drag over and all of a sudden just watch that breakout happen where over the course of like a couple days it was past the all time high and then, you know, within a year's period of time it does like a thousand X returns. It's just insane to see that type of stuff. Yeah, and the coolest part of all is that the, there's actually more people getting into cryptocurrency right now that I've than I've ever seen inside of the entire space. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that are waking up to the idea of it. So instead of just like having that one random like cousin that got rich off of Litecoin or something like that, now you're literally gonna have like multiple family members that got invested into it that are making serious money off of the markets. Yeah. And it's so cool to see as the expansion of the cycle grows how we actually get to include more and more people inside of the cycle mm -hmm. and not just have them buying the top where when we're selling like legitimately being able to get mm -hmm. a large community of people in mm -hmm. near the lows at the point of maximum financial opportunity yep. and to be able to ride that with them. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the coolest part about this cycle as opposed to the previous cycle is the fact that the previous cycle it was fun to be part of but it also kind of felt like a curse to be part of it because everybody that you knew was just like, oh, well, you're the weird kid that's into crypto, mm -hmm. you know, that's into this weird thing that nobody understands or knows about. Whereas now people like my grandma are putting into it in the bottom, not at the top. Yeah. They're putting into the market in the bottom. People like my brothers, my cousins, they're all getting into the market. And to be able to have that expansion, I mean, it makes sense. The cryptocurrency space as a whole is a lot bigger of a community than it was in the past mm -hmm. like because we have more market cap than we did in the first cycle like coinmarketcap.com had like a seven billion dollar total market capitalization when cryptocurrency was in 2016 mm -hmm. and somewhere around there and so to go from seven billion to 256 billion I think is pretty close to where we're at today mm -hmm. 256 billion in market capitalization is like five times in value from the from the lows to where we're at now five seven I can't perfectly calculate in my head so we've had such a large degree of increase from even the previous low of total market cap to the low of total market cap that we have right now mm -hmm. that you can imagine that the community is going to be five ten times bigger than it was before mm -hmm. following that roadmap of the market cap growing and it's just cool to see cryptocurrency become a bigger thing and more of a household name. Yeah, I mean, at the time we got into it, literally, I always say this, the only people that used it were nerds and drug dealers, because you had to be, you know, you had to be at least a little bit tech savvy to even understand oh, how no, the heck Are you sure you weren't both of those? You kind of... Yeah, I'm the, I'm the biggest <laughs> nerd that ever walked the earth. I'm actually a big Star Wars fan, love Star Wars, um, you know like to read books and things <laughs> no honestly that's it, it's it's amazing because like during the original times of bitcoin like i think the biggest reason why people like us got into it was because you know yeah nerds and drug dealers used it but the reason drug dealers used it was because they finally had a way to you know send money and send and receive value away from anybody else and so whether you agree with a drug dealer or not that's not the point what the point is we finally had an option to, you know, get past all of these centralized systems. I now have enough privacy that I can send to whoever I want and nobody can change that. And, you know, with what we're seeing right now, 
we're starting to have, I, I've noticed it with my channel and, you know, people reaching out to me that I personally know, just having so many random people that know nothing about investing that are genuinely curious about getting into crypto and Bitcoin. Whereas when I, I remember the first, I went to a family reunion back in summer of 2016. It was right, I think it was like the week of or like somewhere close around that time frame of the Bitcoin halving that happened in 2016. And this was right when I bought my first Bitcoin. I had already made a little bit of profit. And I went to the family reunion. And, you know, we were talking. They asked me some questions about what I was doing. And I told them that I was really into Bitcoin. And they started asking me questions. And, you know, everybody was so skeptical. Everybody, <laughs> there was not one single person that genuinely believed that it was a good investment. The one person that I did what have was in my it, like family. was $500 per coin at the time? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah what a crappy investment. Yeah, terrible guys. investment. <laughs> Thank God I didn't listen to my family on that one because I, I remember the only person that actually had an opinion on Bitcoin was my uncle and he said oh yeah I was thinking about buying uh, some of those back when it was worth a couple hundred bucks and he's like there isn't any value it's not gonna last and you know he, he hit me up about a year ago and bought it at about 6500 so he's at, he ended up getting back into the the old corn but you know his, <laughs> his profit potential has decreased significantly and so we are seeing those same people that were very negative towards the idea of Bitcoin that told me it wasn't going to work those same people have either a invested B reached out to me about investing or C are just not going to in the in any place in general but you know with all the uncertainty in the world I just think that it's been a very attractive you know, source for people to look into. Yeah, I think that um, probably the biggest driver of Bitcoin right now, one of the biggest drivers, is how many cashless stores there are right now. People are only accepting card. And a lot of people are like, whoa, what is happening? Like, what happened to my cash? They've got cash under their bed. Mm -hmm. They've got cash in their safe. They've got coin jars full of coins, and they've been saving this cash thinking that, oh, if the banks shut down, I'll have this cash to go spend, when really the opposite thing is happening, mm -hmm. where it's like the cash is becoming worthless, the paper money is becoming worthless, digital money is still a real thing and becoming a bigger thing, mm -hmm. and if banks shut down, Bitcoin exists, whether your digital U.S. dollar or your cash under your bed or in your safe is worth anything or not anymore. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is there as your savior. So in a way, the whole panic, the whole pandemic thing was really a blessing in disguise, a silver lining for the adoption of cryptocurrency, excluding all of the, all of the people that were affected by it but for just looking at it from a perspective of how it's influencing the development of technology to not degrade or not, not try to make it seem less of the effect that it's had on people, but there's a lot of silver linings for all of this stuff, a lot of positive things to be looking at, a lot of things to be getting excited about, and really a lot of opportunity that has been generated and spawned out of this event uh, that for me has me thriving and excited and passionate about what I'm doing more than I really ever have been in the past. Yeah, really though. And you know, it's, it's given me a newfound passion that I felt like I was lacking for the majority of my life. I didn't feel like I had, you know, an outlet to direct my energy towards. And through crypto, you know, I feel like I got that. But really, I, I feel like the biggest reason it was it, it was a cultivation of my own energy and my own ambition to find an opportunity that got me into this space. But realistically, to me, I think the biggest reason that was for not only me, but just everybody else that gets into crypto, I think that the biggest selling point is that society itself in America, all over the world, our leaders have cultivated this energy within us that was a 100% perfect ticking time bomb for Bitcoin adoption. You know, people are angry at their government. People are angry at the system. You know, they're angry at all of these different things. They want an alternative because they know that there's something that's missing. And I, the second that the, oper the, uh, the alternative is given to them, it's going to be a night and day difference. They're just going to switch to it immediately once they find out the value. But I think for us, 
is the fact that I did my own research before I had ever gotten to crypto. I did a lot of research about centralized banking. So when I was brought the opportunity, when you told me about Bitcoin, I immediately knew that this thing was going to be something big. Most people aren't educated in that sort of uh, criteria. They don't know the same stuff about where money comes from. They don't understand all of these things. But coronavirus and all of this stuff that's happening on a global scale is waking everybody up. They are the people that weren't savvy when it comes to anything to do with investing, didn't even know where their money came from, just worked a nine to five job, pay pay paycheck to paycheck type stuff. Those people are now starting to wake up and they're starting to realize, hey, there's some fishy stuff going on that is not good for our economy. How are they creating this money out of nothing? How is that going to come back to haunt me or could that be a negative thing for everybody. I started to see the people reach out to me, ask me these questions, asking me about Bitcoin. You know, they're stuck from, you know, lock, lack of job, they lost their jobs, things like that. And so they're starting to look into all their alternatives. And I just think that the way society is working right now is it's created the perfect breeding storm for all of this stuff to flourish. And it's not only an energy in which we've cultivated within ourselves purposely through looking and researching and finding new information, but it's just the energy signature that I think the majority of people in the world are residing with. They're fed up with the current system and they want an alternative. Yeah, it's almost like people are kind of getting desirous of change. Whereas a lot of people are kind of stuck in a state of fear, like a paralyzing fear because of the overwhelming amount of craziness that was happening in the world. Like we were all aware of all the crazy stuff that was happening with the government. A lot of people are starting to wake up to these things. But at the end of the day, I think that until as a species, until we move into a state of desire to where we actually want to make a change, uh, that fear was just kind of leaving people paralyzed. And for, for what I'm seeing right now is a lot of people moving into desire, a lot of people actually kind of elevating themselves into a higher state of mind and seeing the opportunity inside of all the chaos to make a difference, to mm -hmm. voice their opinion, to uh, have influence, to share their knowledge with others, to share their resources with others, to create communities, to create uh, channels, to create businesses, I, movements of ideas, discord groups, all of these different things. People are desiring a better species, a better story than the story that has been told and has been expressed for so long now and it's cool to be part of that shift where we're watching on a global scale not just like an individual scale of course it's happening through every individual globally to see the species moving into a state of desire so we can actually make some changes mm -hmm. and and it's it's an uncomfortable change but it's not as uncomfortable as everybody being stuck in fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's really where you know we've been for so long. And I think that there's a lot of fear right now still. Um, but I, like you said, I think that the fear is a lesser emotion being felt, and it's more people are just ready for change. They desire that change to be felt. I know that that's how I feel personally. I'm sick of hearing all this crap on the news every single day. I'm sick of being manipulated by people that have enough power to manipulate. When I know that, you know, everybody, we have the resources, we have the technology, we have the knowledge, we have everything at our disposal to kind of make a better society. And so that's why for me, you know, I don't get frustrated by everything that's happening because it's really easy to watch the news, be angry with everything. Social media is just completely toxic right now. I just recommend just staying off of it. Looking on Twitter, I haven't seen it because, I mean, for me personally, I'm so focused on crypto that... Um, most of what I see is cryptocurrency related, but you can't hide from the fact that social media, you're going to see all of this negative stuff that you don't need to. And it's got to the point for me where I just see people choosing to focus in on those negative emotions. They're choosing to focus in more on all of this problem, all of the fear that's going on. When in actuality, if you took a look at everything that's transpiring, realistically to me, this looks like a really good uh, opportunity for change. And that's what I think so many people have been wanting for the last 10 years. And, you know, we've tried different sources of doing that, and I don't think that any of it's really worked. And we're getting to the point where people are fed up enough that they are no longer at the point where they're just going to let somebody else make the decisions. 
where we're actually going to have people go out and build alternative solutions that are going to be able to fix all of these issues that we've had. I just think that majority of people are being manipulated and it's going to allow them to either continue to be manipulated or for them to wake up, kind of see what's taking place, and then for them to go about you know, creating that alternative that they want to see. Because if you go out there and you, know, you create this alternative, you see this issue in the world, and you know that it could be solved a certain way, you can go out there and do that. And I think that that's going to be very encouraged over the next couple of years, specifically the next 10 years. I think that we've already started to see this push towards you know, rich people starting to buy up land for preservation. We're starting to see these people you know, creating their own charities because they know that current charities in the system are manipulated and taken for their own personal uh, gain. We're starting to see all of these things. I think the people are, have been fed up with it for a while, and we're just transitioning into this new age where people genuinely are going to do the help. They want to be the change that they see. They want to go out there and make all of this stuff happen for themselves because they know that they can't rely on anybody else to do it for them anymore. Really, we're experiencing the light at the end of the tunnel. And there was like a dim light for a long time now. We've had like an, an awareness that he, the human species is coming out of this kind of dark, like immature era of the species where we did like a lot of things that were even disgusted by ourselves by. Like even people are starting to research and learn about all of these different books of, you know, what happened in Nazi Germany, what happened, all of these historical events that are kind of like, you read them and you like almost get a little sick to your stomach because you're like, wow, that's a human. We have the capability of doing that. But then also at the same time, like we're like waking up, like we're going through like growing pains right now as a species, because as we're elevating our state of consciousness as a, as a planet, uh, we're, we're going from less effective states of consciousness into more effective states of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So like the whole desire thing that's happening, we have people rioting in the streets and stuff like that right now. Well, that it's, it's better than just being paralyzed with fear and having no voice at all. But even that will look into at the future and we'll even come up with better solutions, more effective ways of communicating ourselves. And so I don't have anything against the riots or anything like that. I think it's a stepping stone into a higher state of consciousness for the planet. And, and we're, as we raise our state of consciousness, more and more people will realize even more effective routes of making influence and making change. Because if you're operating at a, a state of peace, and I recommend to everybody that's watching this podcast right now to get on Google and to check out the Hawkins scale of consciousness and just look at it and and just learn a little bit about the the scale basically at the top of the scale you have enlightenment and the bottom of the scale you have shame or guilt one of those yeah, I don't know <laughs> can't see it yeah I think it's shame or guilt and then you have a whole range of emotions in between that now, the person that invented the Hawkins scale, Dr. Hawkins, he, he's a genius man. I've read a, lot, read a lot of his work. And he actually talked a lot about how he thinks that when he wrote the book, he said he thought that the human race was in a state of fear as a collective. We are in a state of fear, which is really effective, which is why we've been so controlled and manipulated over the past hundred years. Because of the fact that if the human species is in a state of fear, you can get them to do very specific things without thought. They just obey essentially because you can pair, you can trigger that state of fear within them mm -hmm. and then they do what you want them to do because of that. Well, that only works for so long. You can't control and you can't use the same tricks indefinitely on a species that has a prefrontal cortex and a brain. Like after a while, they start to wake up to it. It might not be in one generation, you know, but it started, we're in the generation of people waking up. Mm -hmm. And as a collective, we're moving into these higher states of consciousness. If you're operating out of a state of peace, you're way more effective of a communicator, of an influencer than somebody that's anger or desireful. And so for people that are getting maybe angry or desire change right now, and maybe rioting in the streets and all of those different things, like just understand that you're, 
it's better that you're doing that than if you're operating out of a state of fear where you're paralyzed and you don't have any statement to make at all. But even so, realizing within yourself that that too is a stepping stone into higher states of consciousness, which you will be a lot more effective in communicating your ideas, communicating your feelings, communicating your boundaries, and those higher states of consciousness will actually move the planet into a lot more of a unified, peaceful planet. And there's going to be growing pains along the way, there's going to be economic cycles along the way, there's going to be political cycles along the way, but ultimately, the human species, the awakening of the human species, is not only our evolutionary destiny, but it's inevitable because it's a snowball effect. Once one person wakes up, he then creates a domino snowball effect of other people around them waking up to the same things that he has woken up to, he or she has woken up to. And so even if that person dies, the 50 people that he experienced or had experiences with in his life after his awakening experience all have awakenings within themselves and those 50 people spread out to go awaken another hundred people, another thousand people, another and pretty soon it's inevitable for the human species, for the collective consciousness of the human species to be rose to be risen to a level in which that we don't see all of the things that we're seeing in today's world. So we had to go through these growing pains to to create self-awareness, to see what we're capable of from both the positive and the negative aspects of the human mind and elevate ourselves into a more peaceful species. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, just remind, a lot of what we're saying just continuously reminds me of Jordan Peterson, how he always talks about how humans are just riding the fine line between order and chaos. And I always bring that up. How do you have order? Well, you wouldn't know order unless you had chaos and vice versa. How do you know order without chaos? And it's this this really important thing where, you know, even though the world is going through these growing pains, even though there's all of this uncertainty, even though there's riots, all these things, people are angry for a multitude of different reasons, we can't become... And we can't go back to a state of order without this chaos because the chaos is what creates the order that we want to see. You know, if we have issues and we don't fix those issues, we're never going to have order. But the only way that you can actually, you know, fix those issues is to have that short-term chaos where this person agrees, this person disagrees, and they got to hash it out until eventually you come to an understanding. Whichever power wins out, that's the route to order that we're going to take. And I just think with everything that's happening right now, Yes, in the short term, if you take it for face value, everything is just garbage right now. 40 million people are unemployed. There's riots going on. There's this and this and this. But for me, I look at, the, look at this as opposite because I know that through chaos comes order. And so I'm always focused on what is the end result of this. If we were only in a state of order right now, then I would be sitting here thinking, well, this is great at face value. We're not fighting. Everything's okay. But I know. But we're also not growing. Exactly. And that's the thing is, you know, if we're not growing, then you know, what's the point of doing any of this at all? And that's right now we're in growing pains. Right now we're making the choices needed to get us back into a state of order. And that's why, you know, by focusing so much on all this negative stuff that you see on social media, focusing on all these different things, you're never going to actually benefit yourself. You're never going to come to any greater understanding. You're going to cause more chaos within yourself, and you're going to attune yourself to that chaotic frequency. When in actuality, if you understood the direction that we're moving, you understood that we're all going towards a greater state of peace and awareness, then at that point, you can fine-tune yourself to the frequency that you already know is here. And then at that point, it's just a matter of everybody else kind of getting to that same point. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the way that I perceive all of this happening. It's just a good thing. And also, to add to that, if you focus on yourself, like if you literally realize that you, whether it's true or not, if you take 100% responsibility for your reality mm -hmm. and tell yourself that the reason everything is happening in the world is because of your own state of mind, mm -hmm. It sounds like the scariest thing to ever do because then all of a sudden you're like, oh, why would I put so much weight on myself? Why would I believe that I'm the creator of my reality? It's so much easier to say that everybody else is causing this. Mm -hmm. But really, the truth is that 
first and foremost, you should be focused on yourself. You know, practicing meditation, doing different things that you know put you into a state of peace, a state of clarity, mm -hmm. to where all of a sudden you feel so good that your outside world starts reflecting what your inside world is. And that truth, it's a law of reality. That truth is the most empowering truth of all. It's so much more empowering than, hey, how can I go force somebody else to believe what I want them to believe? That's such a weak-minded approach. So useless in comparison to, hey, I'm going to integrate my own state of peace, integrate my own love, integrate my own compassion, cultivate my own compassion for others to the point where if I'm around somebody, I don't have to force myself to be nice to them just because I think that it's morally correct. I feel so good that I'm nice to everybody. It doesn't matter what race, it doesn't matter what culture, it doesn't matter what background, it doesn't matter what religious beliefs they have. You love yourself, you feel peace within yourself, and all of a sudden, you're kind and naturally and genuinely polite to others, not because you're taking some moral stance on something, that you believe that you have to do this because this is what's right, which in turn just makes you express yourself as fake, mm -hmm. and in turn just makes you sound like you're just trying to please another person mm -hmm. rather than genuinely expressing your happiness. Yeah. That's so much less effective than being genuinely happy because you focus on your own inner peace, and therefore in turn, you're polite, positive, influential, kind to all other human beings around you, no matter who they are. Yep, that's well said. And You know, it's so, so, so important that we talk about these things right now because the issue that, in my opinion, one of the biggest issues right now that plagues uh, just society as a whole is the fact that we're constantly being bombarded with all of this external information telling us the problem is not us, but out there. It's either racism, it's either money, it's, you know, whatever, viruses, anything. It could literally be anything. The problem's out here, it's out here, it's this, it's this, it's this. Never once do they ever tell you to take initiative for the way that you feel. It's always trying to put the blame on something else that's outside of you. And the issue with that is you never learn how to cultivate emotional intelligence and maturity within yourself because you're so focused on the fact that, oh, I'm sad because this guy is a racist, or I'm uh, angry and upset because this guy isn't wearing a mask, when the news said that everybody needs to wear a mask. It's these types of things where you get a point where you're just literally going off by what your, your thought process goes. You're just becoming, uh, you're just hardwired with your monkey brain to where anything that anybody tells you, you accept it. You know, you now have no way of even growing as an individual because you've already accepted that the way that you feel is because of this or it's because of that. When in actuality- You've lost your power. Yeah. You've sold your own inner power to a specific belief. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and I see everybody doing that today. And I think that that's then the biggest disadvantage that people have made is the fact that, you know, yes, if you're, for me personally, the way it happened to me, because I used to be a narcissistic person, I used to not be a good no, person you in general. Didn't, bro. Oh, you didn't know me before then. <laughs> I, I wasn't a good person, but the, I was greedy, I was selfish, I was all these little things that I didn't like, but at the same time, I didn't know. Like, I just did things. Like, I would just. Uh, if somebody asked for help, I wouldn't want to do it, I just didn't want to do it for some reason. I didn't know why. But what eventually ended up coming truth was the more I worked on myself, the more I started realizing that I was the, like, the creator of all of these things, all of the emotions that I feel every day, how I feel when I wake up, I started realizing that I created all of that. And once you start to realize that, you stop blaming all of these external forces. You're not, you know, you're not sad because of something your mom did to you when you were five. You're not angry because this person, you know, didn't pay you this at this day or something. You're angry because of something you're lacking within yourself. And that's the biggest thing. If we could focus in on um, programming how we want to feel within ourselves, First, we're not worrying about what this person says, we're not worrying about this, we're not worrying about anything outside of us. We're only focusing in on the emotions that we want to feel. 
and that happiness, once we can cultivate that within us, it's like you said, that's going to just radiate, radiate amongst everything around you. All of your friends are going to pick up on that vibe. Um, your family, anybody that you're close to, it doesn't matter. They're all going to pick up on that. And it's a very good example of leading by example. You want to be the person that leads by example. You want to, you don't, you can't go into a room and say, you guys all need to do this. You're messing up this way. If you don't do it this way, you're going to get more of this. Because then people are going to be like, oh yeah, well, you know everything. Leave me alone. When in actuality, you don't say anything to those people. Instead, you focus in on being the person that you think that these people could be by you being the happy you can be by you working twice as hard and getting the most production out of your work hours as you possibly can reading the most books doing all these things if you want other people to pick up on that you want your to see your employees your friends your family do those things you have to do that first and that's really the only way around it and I just think the issue with today's society is the fact that we're focused so much on these external events when we just need to focus in on within and that's gonna be the answer yeah inner world equals outer world period and if everybody realized that, our outer world would be beautiful beyond our wildest, wildest dreams. Mm -hmm. And that's, what, that's where we're headed to, because like I said, it's a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. Once one person realizes inner world equals outer world, everybody around him sees that, and it, they pick up on that realization for themselves too, teaching by example, like you said. And to add to what you said, you know, if you're a salesperson, for example, say you've got a company, you've got 500 employees and they're not making sales as good as you want them to well go up and literally make a sale in front of everybody on the phone and show them how it's done you don't have to be like you guys are all doing this wrong look at how I do it mm -hmm. just go up and be like inspire them share your energy with them inspire them by making that sale and then they're all gonna pick up on that and start doing the same thing mm -hmm. and and a couple other things that I was thinking about. Um, number one, um, I never seen narcissism in you. I definitely feel like I've seen like everybody could potentially have aspects of them where they behaved in a narcissistic manner, but never once have I seen you act in a way that was narcissistic, that was genuinely this person is a narcissist. Mm -hmm. So. I disagree. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I'm not a narcissist. <laughs> We're all human beings, you know, human beings, especially if you're operating out of a lower state of consciousness or you haven't woken up to certain things, then you may even act in a manipulative sense or say certain things that could have been manipulative. Mm -hmm. But you're not a narcissist, you're just operating out of that state of mind because you hadn't had awareness of right. the higher ones. And th really, that's, I think that's the case with a lot of people out there is the fact that you know they might have these manipulative traits, they might do these things that are negative, but I know from my own perspective, I literally did not know why I did the things that yeah. I did. It was just programming. It was me finally starting to develop the awareness where I could see the oh wow, I'm not just this creature that just knows everything and then just does everything right. I do have that sense of self and I can control the things that I do. But, you know, it's one of those things where you gotta, you know, trading helped a lot in that regard. Learning <laughs> your emotions. I'm, I'm only. Only up a little yeah. bit. <laughs> here, here pretty soon you make a few thousand dollars and then you go 100x leverage on BitMEX, get liquidated, and then you're like, oh wow, that was a nice Christmas bonus for two hours. <laughs> teach you real quick yeah yeah it will it also te it also teaches you just as much in the days where you wake up and you're like oh there really was a nice Christmas bonus in, in an hour in the few hours I was asleep I made more than my dad did all year last year <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are fun. Those are the fun days. Those are really nice. And then the other thing that I wanted to touch on that you brought up is the racism thing, because that's a big that's a big topic of discussion right now. And when we bring up racism, you guys, like we fully are aware that this is a thing that truly happens. Mm -hmm. So in no way are we saying that coronavirus doesn't exist, or that racism doesn't exist, or that this exterior factor doesn't exist. What we are saying is, yes, all of those things are very real, but the solution lies in how you look at them and how you feel about yourself and how you personally react 
to those situations. Because if you're proactively meditating, if you're proactively being a pro positive person in your community, in your society, in your friends, if you're proactively being the change that you want to see in the world, you don't have to go get angry about something. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get angry about something. You are literally already being the person that's so kind to everybody, no matter what color of their skin, mm -hmm. no matter if you know they're wearing a mask or not, you're being the person that is positive in the state of chaos. You're the order in the chaos. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is to be the order in the chaos, awareness of the chaos is okay, but don't tune yourself to it. Mm -hmm. Tune yourself to order, and then you will have power in all of the craziness. Yeah, honestly, the big issue that I see with it, and this can be applicable to everything, it's just for the example of racism, because it's what we're seeing right now. We're, we're seeing so many of these people, you know, most people are not racist. I'd say like 90% of people are not racist, and it could be even higher than that. Um, yeah, people say racist crap all the time. I, I don't really necessarily think that necessarily means they're super like racist, but what I see happen regardless, the people that aren't racist, that genuinely get upset whenever somebody is racist around them, somebody says something derogatory to a person of color, they get angry about that. I think that that's 100% what we should do. We should stand up for people that are being ridiculed for something as dumb as skin color. But the, the issue that I do see is the fact that, you know, people that aren't racist, they're focusing so much on these videos of other people that are racist that they start to get angry towards everybody else. And that's, you know, that's not going to solve anything. When we're focusing so much on these issues and we're just getting more anger and more frustration about all these things, you're not going to be able to give that energy back to anybody else in a positive way. You're not going to want to be positive to other people. You're going to be upset. You're going to talk about your talk to your friends about how this video made you so mad or how this did this or how racist this guy was being. When we're putting the spotlight on such a fine majority of people, at the end of the day, the majority of people aren't racist. Um, you know, I've never had a problem talking to anybody with a different color. I've always been able to sit down, have normal conversations with them because they're just people. And that's the thing is, you know, we've gotten out of this way of thinking where it's like we've started treating everybody like they are different. And for that, it's, it's put a spotlight on the overall issue that, in my opinion, we were moving on past that. And I think that, you know, with this, it's, like it's falling back is yeah. what you're saying, kind of like falling back into some of the old traps that yeah. we used to be in. And don't get me wrong, racism is 100% a real thing. You cannot argue against it. And it's terrible. Yes. It's not a thing that we want to see in our society. Yes, exactly. However, the more that we put the spotlight on the issue, the more that the issue itself gets enhanced. The more that we put the spotlight on... You know, like you're saying, cultivating a state of non-racism within yourself, being happy to where you could go out in public, you could see somebody that was black, you could see somebody that was brown, you could see somebody that was purple, and you would say the exact purple. same thing to them. We got aliens in the mix. <laughs> yeah, <now>. exactly. <laughs> so, and that's that's the thing, man. Just give love to everybody around you. It doesn't matter what their skin color is, and when you, most importantly, when you direct that love within yourself. You, you move past those judgments, you move past those barriers and things, and this is, I mean, racism for me isn't even something I think of because A, I'm not racist, and B, that's it. <laughs> there is no, there's nothing <laughs> further that goes beyond that, but the problem is when you're starting to see it all over the place, starting to hear about it, you know, it puts a spotlight on something when in actuality we should be doing the opposite of that. We should be focusing on people that Focus on, you know, that, that black guy that went to a white community and did all these good things. He donated money. Or focus on that white guy that went to a Mexican community and did all those good things. Put the spotlight on the person that's actually doing good instead of focusing on that one person that said some racist thing to somebody. Yeah, I agree. And also, to add to that, I think that... I think that tribalism stems from a place of lack. And so as we cultivate gratitude and as we cultivate inner peace, you no longer have that lack within you. Mm -hmm. And tribalism kind of just disappears out of your state of mind. It's not something that you even think about anymore. 
And so, yeah, man, I, I just, I personally have been just cultivating gratitude. I've just been thankful for the African American community. I've been thankful for my white friends, my black friends, for my Mexican friends. I've got friends in every culture. I've met a lot of different people throughout my life. I grew up in a very small town in Vernal, Utah, where I was not exposed to very many other cultures. Mm -hmm. As I've matured, as I've developed as a person, I was exposed to a lot of different people from a lot of different cultures and I've gained value from every single mm -hmm. culture that I've ever met, mm -hmm. every single person and, and, and I've learned a lot about him too, learned a lot. Like one of my favorite things about the Mexican culture is how family oriented they are and how much they look out for each other as mm -hmm. families yeah. and have their little communi communities and have family events together and they're so polite and so kind and so mm -hmm. caring and that family energy about them. One of my favorite things about the African American culture is how strong and powerful they are. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, they're kings. They, they call themselves kings a lot. A lot of my black friends I've talked to, they're, they're like, I'm a king. They've said that to me before. And, what an empowering thing to say, mm -hmm. to realize that they are kings, that they are powerful people, like literally physically strong mm -hmm. and powerful and extremely intelligent. And so when you find that, when you see the positive inside of everybody, mm -hmm. when you see the good aspects of every culture, of every community, of, of everybody, then all of a sudden you just start seeing that in everybody mm -hmm. too. It, it, it grows upon itself. It's a snowball effect of itself. Just like in the way that if you get angry about something somebody of another culture does, how that can snowball into more anger. Mm -hmm. If you instead see the positive in that person, see the beauty in them as a human being, then that will also snowball and you'll see more of that in everybody around you. And the more that we all do that, the more that we all see that in other people, the more that w that will reflect the reality around us. Yeah. And so that's the solution, in my opinion. That's a lasting, long-term solution for the human species so that we see each other as all equal and all the same because we are all the same. We're all human beings. Earth is our mother, like literally our mother. There's a, mythologically, Earth is our mother. So she birthed us. So that means we're all cousins and brothers. So we're all literally family on this planet, mm -hmm. by definition, and there's no way to get around that. So what do you do? You integrate it. You figure out how to work together. Mm -hmm. You figure out how to realize that we are family. Mm -hmm. You start incorporating family values for the whole planet. And I think that is the long-term solution because I don't believe that inherently people want... I don't think it's in our DNA. You know, I always see people post stuff like people are not born racist and they'll post pictures of like a black kid and a white kid hanging out together in a mm -hmm. park or playing together. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Like we are not born. It's not in our DNA to be like that. Mm -hmm. It's a learned thing because of experiences, because of passed down information, because of perpetuated belief systems mm -hmm. that become integrated and they become what they think are fact, what they think are truth, when really it's just, oh, this person had a traumatic experience because of this specific event, and they decided to blame it on this specific culture or person, mm -hmm. and then therefore they told their kid about it, and now yeah. their kid believes that that's the truth of reality. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, if you, specifically in rural areas, um, you'll get people that are, you know, 80 plus years old, and those are people that grew up in a time where it was, they had just gotten over slavery. That's that's the craziest part about all of this is the fact that we're not very far back from still having slaves. And so there is this like adjustment period that's gonna take place where, you know, they finally you know, blacks and people of color and other ethnicities, they have their their freedom per se. Legally, they can now do the things that they were bound from doing before. But now we're having this adjustment period where they're starting to come in, but then there's still, you know, the old outdated sayings. There's still those old people that taught their kids that black people are still evil or the Mexicans are evil or all these things. We still have those um, lingering belief belief systems. But I think that the that vast, serve us. Yeah. I think the vast majority of people, and I experienced it firsthand, my friends aren't racist. I don't really know anybody that's genuinely racist, to be completely honest, I don't. Um, you could look at, you know, the older generations, they say racist crap. 
they were also raised in a different time. But that's the thing is we don't need to push their same beliefs. We can cultivate our own. And for me, I'm not racist. You're not racist. My friends aren't racist. Black people, Mexican people, Chinese people that I've met, they haven't been racist to me. Therefore, you know, we're already moving past that. And I think that there still is that lingering bit of racism, but I think that with all of what's happening right now, we are awakening to the fact that we are all one. And it, I yeah. think that we've already known this. Specifically, I mean, with, if you look at the black community, part of the whole Black Lives Matter movement has been to show we all are one. Why are we still being treated like yeah. we're not? And I love that movement. I think that that's a justifiable movement. And I believe that through this, we're starting to get that awakening. And I think that white people in general, and whatever, we're all kind of getting in on this movement together. And, you know, maybe people are manipulating it for their own personal monetary gain. That's going to happen regardless. Yeah. But nonetheless, I believe that the path is constantly leading to one of betterment for society, one of betterment as individuals, and just, just the future of humanity as a whole. Yeah, it's just like, it's the same argument that comes up with like, you know, whether you're gay or not, or homosexual. What your choice is with that thing, to look at another person differently because of that, is to look at yourself differently within yourself. Like, it's all the same. Like, we are all the same hu human species. Mm -hmm. And what I've actually personally noticed, when I... I was homeschooled majority, but I did go to high school for a trimester to do some socializing, to experience the different classes. And what I personally noticed was the opposite of what the media portrays. Mm -hmm. What I saw was actually people being interested in people of other cultures, mm -hmm. other ethnicities than them, or interested in people with different sexual orientations to actually learn and understand from them as a person and figure out, okay, how are we the same? How can we enjoy each other's company? How can we see each other as human beings mm -hmm. that we are? And what I've actually personally seen and what I always felt when I was younger, if I saw somebody of a different ethnicity, I was in a way sometimes more inspired to go talk to them and learn about them and understand them because of the fact that it was something that was different mm -hmm. than than maybe what I was used to, you know. It, the town that I grew up in, that we grew up in, had a very high population of Caucasian. It's just the percentages yeah. were high. And so we didn't, we weren't exposed to that as much. But it, so in a way I was like kind of more curious to like learn from them and that's what I've seen in my sister, that's what I've seen in my friends, that's what I've seen in the people that I've met in my life. I think most people, what you say, most people are generally good. Like most people are not racist. Most people actually just want to connect with other human beings, have enjoyable experiences with them, create memories, create prosperity, and live our lives in peace. I think that's the, I think that's what people want. Mm -hmm. I genuinely. Do. Yeah. I, 100%. At the end of the day, it's specifically as a man, I would say the most fundamental principle of being a man is to constantly strive for freedom. I think that's the biggest thing for me. Anyways, that is the root of my every being is freedom. That's all I care about. And I want to find that freedom for myself and, and in the process, others. Yeah, exactly. In the process of finding the freedom for myself, others will find it too. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. I think humans are not racist. Humans are taught to be racist. Humans aren't evil. We're taught these things. Everything that makes humanity what we are, we are taught. We were learned or we had some negative experience or some experience that just happened to shape us and mold us into what we see today. And I don't think that we're going to be very far from seeing, if we have to have a civil war to get the answers and to get everybody to understand and be on the same page, that's what needs to happen. At the end of the day, I'm constantly focused on the long-term order that this is all going to create. Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty. Yeah, there's all this stuff. But nonetheless, it's all going to the same direction, which, in my opinion, is going to be one of peace going to be one yeah. of understanding. And we're not going to have these things because right now we're being manipulated by wealthy people, people, I wouldn't even say wealthy, but just people with power. Um, I think that we're being More manipulated. More greedy would be a better word. Yeah. Greedy yeah. people. Exactly. Which isn't true wealth. Right. I think that what, what we're being showed on the news is always, this guy murdered this person, this guy did this bad, or 
this was bad because of this, or this president did this thing. And it's always focusing on these negative things when, in actuality, in the next 20 years, people are becoming so sick of this current mindset and this frame that we're in right now, that over the next 20 years, we'll start to see a switch where the news will be one from focusing all on the bad things that happen to focusing on the good. This guy donated this much to charity. This is what he's doing with it. This guy built this many houses for these people in Africa or these things. And that's the thing. Right now we have all of the tools at our disposal to make a world peace right now. The issue is there's a select few people that want their own personal well-being to be taken first and foremost and they're, they're willing to play both sides of the fight in order mm -hmm. for profitability greed like you said and so i think they create chaos on purpose yeah. exactly to profit off of both sides exactly because it's extremely profitable to be invested in democratic party in the republican party and a lot of these people mm -hmm. are invested in both <laughs> yeah. ready for the one to take <laughs> shine when it's ready to shine the other one yeah it's really just as it's really I love what you said because it's really just us orientating ourselves from old ideas of short-term personal profit and greed versus long-term inherent wealth for the population for the planet. Mm -hmm. And that's just a sh it's a paradigm shift that we have to have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happening. And it's basically like everybody knows that if we did if we put positive stuff on the news every single day we would get way, way more beautiful experiences out of just being alive. Everybody, if everybody was focused on all of the beautiful things that is happening all, all the time in the world, which there is a lot yeah. of beautiful things happening in the world right now as we speak. There's literally people getting donated money. People, some waiter right now is about to go up to a table and see a $200 tip or a $300 tip and she's going to cry because she knows that she's going to be able to feed her kids mm -hmm. with that tip because she was low on money and she needed food for mm -hmm. her kids and money for diapers and toilet paper mm -hmm. and now she has it. Yeah. Like that is happening in the world right now. Let's promote that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm honestly to the point now where it's like with all of what's happening on the news, with all of what I see from my friends on social media, all this stuff, it's gotten me to the point where I'm completely sick of hearing about it and <laughs> all I want to do. Because here's the thing, I see exactly what they're doing. The entire world is manipulating each and every individual on here to focus on all of the bad shit that's going on. Yeah. When in actuality, Magnify all we it. have to do is switch that frame, stop focusing on all this negative stuff, understand it exists, but then you be the person that focuses on all of the other things. Be the person that focuses on that waiter making that money to pay her kids or feed her kids. Focus on something positive happening in the world, like some big billionaire investing millions of dollars towards you know cleaning up the plastics in the ocean. Whatever the heck it might be, focus on those good things. Cultivate that sense of satisfaction, that sense of happiness, and everything will transpire from you. It's the exact same uh, argument that people use. Well, if one person took the time to pick up all of the trash that they see on the ground, or if they took the time to recycle all of their plastic. It only takes one person to uh, network with this person. That person gets the idea, and then it moves to this guy. And it's the butterfly effect that is going to transpire. Just the same in which it will take, not, it will take each and every person to pick up the trash on the earth, to clean our environment and these things, it's going to be the exact same way to get rid of all this negative crap, all the racism, all of the bickering back and forth. The second that you decide to focus on the alternative is when you become the alternative and then you create the domino effect that just basically cascades from then on. Exactly. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I'm happy to be part of the movement. I'm happy to be part of the revolution mm -hmm. of people taking responsibility for their own state of mind, people taking responsibility for the outer world through their own inner world. Mm -hmm. And I think that is hands down the most empowering belief you can ever receive in your entire life. Mm -hmm. You are the creator. Your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. What's going on on the outside? Take responsibility for it on the inside by maintaining your own peace, treating your body like a temple, and doing the things that allow you to maintain that composure and that peace within you. Now you guys need to go back 30 seconds towards the end of this video and just replay that 
every single day. <laughs> just replay that, just replay that, and then ask questions, and then replay it some more, and then eventually, all of a sudden, what is racism? <laughs> exactly. Grab your iPhone right now, open up voice memos, your Android, record that part, and play it back every day. And one more quote that I wanted to say here, because I thought about this the other day. Politics is trying to change everything outside of you with force, and spirituality is influencing the outside world from within. You choose. And I think that pretty much sums up yeah, everything. everything that we've been talking about today. Yeah, so always remember to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and to Dallin's channel. You'll be able to find links in the description here. You'll also be able to find links to all of the platforms where we post and host this server or podcast, I should say, on Spotify, Google, iTunes, Stitcher is the other one, all of them basically. You guys are going to be able to download, you're going to be able to see this podcast every single Sunday. That's when we upload, we record on Saturday, upload Sunday. And yeah, make sure that you guys check out both of our channels. We both upload five days a week. We love and support every single one of you guys that are here supporting us. It really just means everything. Specifically, just seeing all these supporting faces, everybody being positive inside the Discord. We just need more of that, and so as much positivity as we can cultivate, it's just going to make everything run smoother. So thank you guys for just yeah. doing that, continuing being who you are, because you know we wouldn't be able to do it without you. Yep, yeah, gratitude for everybody watching this, and looking forward to future podcasts in California, where we're going to be hanging out on the beaches yeah. together all the time. Moving to Santa Monica. <laughs> Making live streams. Yeah, yeah so. Doing interviews. Finally going to be doing live streams because my internet out here in rural BFE just doesn't work. So. <laughs> BFE. <laughs> we're, Most we're gonna, people are not going to uh, probably I know. know what BFE is. I know, I didn't want to say it either. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you guys can expect live streams. You can expect beach vlogs. You can expect profits. It's all the amazing things that happen with crypto. Yeah, Something the real crazy. thing is, you guys, I'm just going to have to watch out for him. I'm going to have to watch him real close because you guys just pray for him. He's going to have a lot of girls going after him and I'm going to have to really make sure the, he keeps a level yeah. maintained head. Just make sure you guys comment below <laughs> your support for um, all of the girls that are going to be just going after me while out there in California. You guys and always me too. Yeah, <laughs> me you guys too. Just the always, danger is equal. Yeah, you guys just maybe hopefully you're not the girls coming after us if you're watching. Hopefully you are the girls coming after us. Everybody, Crypto girls yeah, we accept. Crypto girls reach out to us. He's got an email. I got it. I'm just kidding. I'm not kinda. Uh, but yeah guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And with all that being said, we will catch you in the next video. As always. Peace out. Stay comfortable out there.